Hello, this is Bob Brown. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is Sunday, January 8th, 2017. We're looking in the Herald Times, Bloomington uh, section of Nation and World, and specifically two sections, um, two articles to look at. FBI says the gunman flew to Florida specifically to target to attack the airport. This is from the Associated Press by Kelly Kennedy. Iraq war veteran charged could face death penalty. And this is a picture of the attacker, uh, Santiago. The other article here is blast in Syria. Uh, near Turkey kills nearly 50 people. And this is from the Associated Press, Beirut, Lebanon. This is for the reports coming out of uh, Lebanon. Uh, this attack happened in Syria. A car bomb ripped through a busy commercial district in rebel-held Syrian town along the Turkish border Saturday, killing nearly 50 people in a huge explosion that damaged buildings, left rescuers scrambling to find survivors amid the wreckage. Opposition activists said, uh, quote, rescuers and doctors said the explosion was so large there were nearly 100 wounded and burned. More than 50 wounded were transported to the Turkish border, the town of Kilis, for treatment as local hospitals couldn't cope. So, a uh, car bomb ripped through a busy commercial district in the rebel held town. So, in both cases, uh, this individual here flew specifically, or that's what the authorities are saying, and I have no reason to doubt him, he flew specifically to the Florida airport to attack the airport and spread terror there. And then we also see the article where uh, terrorists attacked in the commercial district, a busy commercial district here, a car bomb ripped through a busy commercial district in Rebel Hell Town. So the, the target of terror, as I wrote in my master thesis, is it's, it's, it's multi-layered. It's, multi it's to inflict terror, but it's also to paralyze the, the political structure, the military structure. But on this channel, we're concerned about business. It's about paralyzing business and the economy. Once business is shut down, the economy is shut down, everything shuts down. People don't have a way of living, they can't eat, they can't get food, they can't get fuel. Everything shuts down. The business of the world is business. And what terrorists are seeking to do on all fronts, what they're seeking to do on all fronts is to spread terror to paralyze the world's economy. Because once they, they realize they can control like a spider controls the web, they can control the world with terror because they're hitting like airports and they're hitting commercial centers where people are just trying to get on with their daily lives, trying to, you know, uh, trying to make their lives a better, um, ha have a better way of living, just buying food, conducting business, signing deals, making sales. That's what people want to do. And they want to do that in the Middle East just like they want to do it here. So as I keep saying, all of us in business, we have to start protecting our businesses. We have to start making uh, blocks of businesses. We need to come together with an idea of trying to have better security for sections of our city. So I would tell people that like-minded merchants should be creating a, a business, business neighborhood watch association. Work with the neighborhood watch associations. These have to be empowered. Now, I'm not talking vigilantes walk around with weapons. I'm talking about sane, secure methodologies to secure your business, have camera systems, team up, maybe five or ten businesses team up and hire a private security firm that can patrol. Because basically, the deterrence for theft and crime is just simply having a patrol. So, that, again, local entrepreneurs who want to provide service, you can. And there's a little known fact that I want to get out there to businesses. A lot of police are willing to do off-duty work. And a lot of times they can use their vehicle and be in uniform. And you can pay the local, you can contact the local state police or local police department and say, do you have any police who want to do off-duty security work? And you'll, they'll be surprising there enough. A lot of these fees are around anywhere between $35 and $75 an hour. So on a weekend, if a, if a group of businesses, say 10 businesses, said, hey, we want to have at least five hours of patrol in and around our properties, or maybe even include going into our properties, or maybe, let's just make it easy in math, 10 hours, say it's $45, that's $450 per weekend. So a police officer is getting extra money to supplement his income, and you're getting the best security money can buy. You're having a police car, 
or even an unmarked car, or maybe the police officer is in a security vehicle, but at least they're a trained person. So you can help your local police department by contacting the Fraternal Order Police, contacting the state police, contacting your local police department, and come together as an as a organization of businesses saying, on, on our block we have 20 businesses, and we want, them, we want this to have extra private patrol that includes going into the business and checking them out. And you, you'll get really good security at a lower rate to protect your business. So this is one way to help the police, the local community. And again, you're helping the local community because you're putting more police on the street. They're getting better pay. They're going to look out for your business. This is what I recommend highly. That's an easy way to do it. And businesses can also reach out to neighbors and say, hey, we're, we're, we're promoting this uh, kind of private security that we, where we have off-duty police come and patrol our businesses. Would you in the neighborhood, would you like to include yourselves in this? Maybe you have a neighborhood association and you pay $100, $200 and the police go through there. You say, you say well, that's the cops' jobs anyway. Well, the cops can't be everywhere. And if they're on duty, they, they, they're, they're responding to things that are going on. Off-duty policemen, although they can be called in, they can be called off your security detail, they're going to be more, more focused on your business. This is a very successful model. It will help businesses grow and flourish and keep deter crime. As we said in another video, you have to control your perimeter of your business. You have to know who's coming on your property and who's not. And in these commercial districts in the Middle East, if you've ever seen these places, it's, I don't know how you would secure them. But in America, it can be secure. You can have ways of knowing who comes in, who comes out, you can pay for, you know. This could even be a, a social media campaign where you have a private social media where the merchants and local people have access, these are trusted people, have access to camera systems that you've paid to have installed, you know, wireless cameras. And then you basically have everyone with an app on their smartphone and everyone kind of looks out for everyone else. So that's a way of saying, because I have an old saying, how do you sneak up on a flock of crows? You don't, because there's a thousand eyes watching you and you'll never sneak up on them. So that the thousand eyes, you know, how do you sneak up on a flock of crows? You don't, because, the, or maybe it should be a flock of geese. You can't sneak up on them, they're seeing you. When you try to sneak up on geese, there's a hundred sets of eyes watching you. That's what you need in your neighborhood. You need a hundred sets of eyes watching it. With the smartphone apps, having trusted people monitoring who comes and goes in and out of the neighborhood. This is kind of like a throwback to the old days when the little old lady kept, kept an eye on things out her window and she would tell everyone. That's exactly what you want. That's, that's what you want. You want people not really spying but keeping an eye on things. And again, this would be trusted people, reliable people, professional people, people that you know, we're not here to spy on people and spread gospel. We're here to say, hey, this person doesn't seem to belong here and they seem to be acting suspiciously. I think I'll make a call to the local police department. So these are ideas that businesses, neighborhoods, malls are going to have to get in. We're going to have to accept the fact that we individually are going to have to take responsibility for our security. I, that doesn't mean the government's not there, but we're going to have to help the government. As we've seen at this airport, you know, uh, you know, the, this guy got into the baggage claim area and there's a lot of controversy. Was he on the plane? Do you have an altercation on the plane? Was he never on the plane? Irregardless, that the, the terrorists or the people trying to disrupt the, the business and the world, they're always going to find that weakest point. And they'll find it. They're like termites. They're always digging to find it. So every business, every hospital, every school, every organization has to have what I can talk Call control per perimeter control and monitoring. And the best thing to do in every school or business institution is again to have trusted people with phone apps that are watching that camera. Because you have people sitting in the room, hey, that's their job to watch it. They're going to look away, they're going to go to the bathroom, they're going to be eating their sandwich, and they're going to miss something. But when you have a thousand set of eyes watching, they're going to catch it. They're going to see, hey, that's going down right now. And again, it's not perfect. But it's, it's a surveillance state that at least we, the people, are in control of. If we have to have a surveillance state, and I don't want it either, we, the people, have to be in control of the surveillance state. We have to set up our own systems 
and as neighbors and business partners, we have to monitor it together in a sane, rational, ethical, moral fashion to keep an eye on who's coming in and out of our area. And again, this is not what we want America to be, and, and maybe one day we won't have to have this. But right now we're in a period of, you know, of asymmetric warfare. That's what we're in right now. And with the targets being soft, you know, like now people are going to be afraid to go to the airport. And people are going to cancel their flights. That's going to hurt local businesses. It's going to hurt the airports. It's going to hurt the airlines. It hurts a lot of people. And that's their target. The real target is the constant disruption of the economy. The, the terror and the pain and the suffering and the death, that's the shock value. And that's what happens and that's the horrible thing they do to people. But that's their first, that's their first hit. But what they're really after is the, is the dampening effect of living in fear under a cloud of fear. You'll do what we tell you or we're going to do this again. We're going to, and it's, at the end, it's about controlling money. Because now they've dampened the economy. Hey, if you don't want us to do this again, you start paying us. Eventually, in my opinion, these organizations will start, if they haven't already, they're going to start extortion. And they're in, it's already a form of extortion. They're eventually going to go to the governments of the world and say, if you want us to stop this, just pay us a lot of money. And of course, we can't do that because once you pay them once, it's over. Uh, you know, they, then, it, then everyone's in on the game. So I believe in citizen vigilance, citizen surveillance, citizen, and citizen controlled uh, monitoring of the area. That's the, that's the only answer. Leaving it to the government alone, and of course the government's going to set up their cameras and that's fine, but you need to set up your cameras so you can keep an eye on it. Because at, at the end of the day, you, the business owner, you're going to be more concerned for your business, your home, your livelihood, your neighbors, than anyone else. So you have the most invested in the game. So considering, consider setting up, so the point of this video is in this two parts. Contact your local fraternal order police, the state police, or your local police department, and, and go in and talk to them and say, hey, do you have off-duty police officers who want to make extra money? Everybody's hand's going to go up in that room, by the way, when you say that. Work a deal out with them saying, hey, I want to have my business patrolled or monitored four hours every week, four hours on Saturday, four hours on Sunday, and, and then you go to your other businesses in your area and say, would you like to be part of this? And you can get the cost down. And if that works out really well, you might be able to go to your the neighbors, you know, the homeowners around the fringe of your businesses and get them involved. And then again, it's a win-win. The police are going to be more involved with you. They're not going to be the police and you. The police and you are in a business partnership. And that's a good way to be. That's good to be citizens and police working together. Citizens, businesses, and police working together. That's good. That's a good thing. Not there, it's them versus us. It's like, hey, the police really do work for us because we pay their salary. And now they're really working for us part-time. They really are kind of our employees. That's a good thing for the, our democracy. So that's one idea. The second idea is set up monitoring systems, cameras, security doors, work with your local businesses and get a system set up, get smartphone apps so that you can have that thousand set of eyes you know, you can't sneak up on a flock of geese. You can't sneak up on a flock of crows. I don't think it's a flock of crows. I think it's something else. But a flock of geese, you can't sneak up on them because there's a thousand set of eyes watching you. And once you put that app on the phone and have trusted people, trusted business advisors, people that are reliable, ethical, moral, that are what and legal watching this, you're going to lower, you'll be able, to, and once people know that this is in the fact that, hey, this neighborhood is under constant citizen watch, and it's not just those watch signs. This is different. This is like there are, there are actual computerized cameras monitoring everything going in and out of here. Again, crime will lower. I'm trying to do that in my local neighborhood myself. I'm trying to get people on board, that we put cameras up. We have designated people to monitor who comes in and out of this neighborhood. Motion sensors can record cars. Now you're gonna to have to work with the city on this. Now you can put them out your window. Of, what I propose is you put them out the front window and your back window of your house, and then you have, like I said, it's it's not where anyone can see into your house; they can see around your house. And then you and like-minded neighbors get together and say, "Hey, we'll keep an eye on each other." Thing. And then there's email alerts that go out to everyone on the email list, and you'll know what's going on. Well, again, this has been Bob Brown. Keep thinking security. Think what's best for democracy, and as always, keep studying.